Hi, I'm Max Kaiser. Welcome to the Kaiser Report, and welcome to 2013. You know, more than 130 years ago, the outlaw Jesse James, when robbing a train, used to tell the passengers, and I quote, we're not ordinary thieves, we're bold robbers. The victims loved it, and almost every single one of the victims he killed was unarmed. Yes, the population adored him. Today, the likes of Jamie Dimon and Lloyd Blankfein similarly enjoy celebrity status as bold robbers of unarmed municipalities and pension funds across the world. Cheeky Jamie, lovable Lloyd, are heroes to many a young, hoping to be derivative slinging financial murderers in the high frequency trading in dark pools. Is 2013 the year, however, of the banking death penalty? We will see the demise of the outlaws and the law and order restored to the high plains of finance. That is my prediction for 2013, Stacey Herbert. Max, welcome to 2013. We haven't got to sleep yet, have we? I'm loving it! <laughs> well, the first headline we're going to cover is uh, a good omen for 2013. It's a bad omen, I think, for lovable Lloyd and adorable Jamie. UBS LIBOR manipulation deserves the death penalty. This is William Cohen from Bloomberg.com. And he says, there's no point in mincing words. UBS, a Swiss global bank, has been disgracing the banking profession for years and needs to be shut down. This is in light of the $1.5 billion fine they paid to several regulators across the world for manipulating LIBOR, primarily through their Tokyo office. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So this fella on Bloomberg calls for death penalty for UBS. Now, I've been talking about this for a number of years. I was on a show here in the UK, uh, Channel 4, 10 o'clock live. I said hang the bankers, and that clip is not available to be seen in the UK. It's censored by the UK uh, regulatory authorities who don't want the citizens here to understand that there's a growing consensus to execute bankers, <laughs> that there's the global insurrection against banker occupation. To be clear, Bloomberg is not calling for the execution of any of these people. They're calling for the execution of the companies that UBS should be put out of business. But all of the banks should be put out of business because UBS was just one of the banks to be doing this. Now, William Cohen says that an even more emphatic message needs to be sent to UBS by its prudential regulator in the U.S. You are finished in this country. We are padlocking your Stanford, Connecticut, and Manhattan offices. You need to pack up and leave now. So I want to highlight one of the things that Bloomberg in their article highlights about the UBS bankers, one of the most egregious emails that was sent back and forth. To see the level to which UBS employees descended, one need look no further than their written communications as per U.S. prosecutor's document dump. Mate, you're getting bloody good at this LIBOR game, one broker told the UBS derivatives trader. Think of me when you're on your yacht in Monaco, won't you? Mm, right. The old saying when I was on Wall Street, where are the customers' yachts? <laughs> you know, this was a cheeky, you know, because the brokers would get rich. There's, you know, in America, you've got the have-nots and the have-yachts. Basically, the entire economy is split and it's becoming uh, bifurcated in this way as money trickles up to the yacht owning hedge fund managers in Greenwich, Connecticut, and the HSBC bankers who commit terrorist financing and money laundering, or whether it's uh, this particular call against UBS from the Bloomberg journalist calling for the execution. But I mean, he doesn't, uh, he, he, he obviously uses these words to uh, evoke uh, scenes of public execution. I don't think he's really stepping away from that. He didn't come back and retract that statement in whatsoever. I applaud his good sense uh, in calling for this. And I just, again, I just don't understand why we've got drones flying around the world targeting kids, why there's so much violence directed toward people that uh, where, where it's not needed. We need the violence directed more specifically. So. I want to focus on one of the things they talk about in this article about what the regulators said in terms of what UBS did, how they committed these crimes. It found that unidentified UBS traders entered into wash trades, described as risk-free trades that canceled each other out and had no commercial rationale. 
in order to facilitate corrupt brokerage payments to three individual brokers at two other firms. Well, wash trades are used to manipulate prices. So let's say Goldman Sachs wants to manipulate the price of a stock or they want to manipulate the price of silver uh, to 29 or $27 an ounce. They will flood the exchange with orders to buy and sell at $27 an ounce until the exchange, until the paper market gets to $27 an ounce. And then, of course, they make side bets in the options market to profit from the collapse of price lower. And they get the benefit of having supported the dollar by crashing the price of precious metals. That's one way to use a wash trade. We use it all the time when I was working on Wall Street to manipulate the price of securities, especially around options expiration month, where the options expiration month, which is at the end of the, every month, and they have the triple witching at the end of each quarter, et cetera. This is when it's particularly beneficial for manipulators like Jamie Dimon at J.P. Morgan or Goldman or here at HSBC, Barclays, Lloyds, et cetera, to engage in this, these wash trades to manipulate prices, uh, to uh, rape and pillage uh, from the markets, to take money out of the markets, and to distort prices. You know, the, the price signals are completely distorted now. There's no free market. There's only distortion now. Now, going back to this notion that we need to execute these banks, put these businesses, these corporations out of business that are um, slaughtering the financial markets. Again, wash trades are described as risk-free trades that canceled each other out. This is the equivalent of gunning down unarmed participants in the market because who they're, it's risk-free for the banks who are manipulating the prices, but somebody's paying it, somebody's taking all the risk, and that's the passive investors, that's the pension funds, that's the small shareholders, that's municipalities around the world who are going bankrupt. Well, the biggest uh, players in this would be the central banks, whether it's the Federal Reserve Bank in Washington or the Bank of England here in the UK. They are engaged in wash trades, and they also engage in naked short selling. For example, they will counterfeit or naked short sell short-term treasury paper and then use the proceeds to buy long-term treasury paper to manipulate the price of interest down uh, to keep uh, their profit centers high. And people say, well, I love, I love cheaper rates because it's great for my mortgage. However, for every dollar they make on a mortgage gain from a lower rate, they lose $2 in their pension accounts, and that was recently... Uh, published by the Bank of England said that there's 140 billion pounds lost due to interest rate manipulation and only 70 billion gained on the mortgage side. So th again, the population, they cheer on the executioners like that Jesse James out there, the people like uh, Lloyd Blankfein and Jamie Dimon that are murdering people with their with their financial weapons, uh, and they, at the same time, they're, they're becoming bankrupt. Well, you talk about treasuries and central banks being uh, complicit in this manipulation of LIBOR and global interest rates. So I want to turn to a little clip we, earlier in the year. We, we've asked a, f a few guests to make their predictions for 2013, and we talked to Rob Kirby, who has been really crucial in identifying the key moments in manipulation of LIBOR, of silver, uh, and other contracts. And he mentioned that, first of all, uh, J.P. Morgan has the largest derivatives book in the world. It's seventy trillion dollars. Of that seventy trillion, about eighty percent, a little bit more, is interest rate swaps. So no other bank on earth has more interest in manipulating interest rates than J.P. Morgan. So with this notion that we should execute UBS, the bank, let's look at what Rob Kirby said about the LIBOR scandal. J.P. Morgan is more complicit in the LIBOR scandal than anyone. J.P. Morgan was the LIBOR scandal. That's where it all originated. J.P. Morgan uh, uh, doing trades with the U.S. Treasury, with the New York Federal Reserve uh, acting as the go-between or the conduit. This is, this is why interest rates went to zero. Uh, you can and it shows up on the charts. You can you can measure you can measure the the growth in J.P. Morgan's short-term swap book with with the cascades and in interest rates first from five percent down to three and then from three percent down to under one percent and and both of those huge huge elevator drops in in interest rates were accompanied by seven point five trillion dollar and an eight trillion dollar bloat in the less than one year swap. Uh, derivatives positions of J.P. Morgan.
Good point. I mean, J Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan are the biggest terrorists. And, you know, a couple of things on the nomenclature side. First of all, it's funny because on Wall Street or in the finance business, you use the word execute to talk about a trade. The trade mm -hmm. was executed. <laughs> and but you know there's a double meaning to that obviously because they're executing individuals or and, and this word terrorism I want to be clear I, I mean it in a literal sense it's not a figurative expression here they are literally terrorists they are any law that applies to anyone who blows people up and commits mass murder should be applied ten times to a Jamie Dimon as a terrorist full stop the fact that he's not uh, prosecuted in any way means that Obama means that David Cameron are complicit with terrorism they're okay with terrorism they encourage terrorism and that for these populations in, a, in America or the UK if you don't want a terrorist running your country you need to get you need a regime change they've done that in North Africa they're doing it around Europe regime change is another 2013 theme I think the UK is right for a regime change America is right for a regime change you mentioned regime change and I do ask Rob Kirby I did ask Rob Kirby whether or not JP Morgan would fall would this be the year 2013 that the J.P. Morgan fell because of all the manipulation, and this is what he said. J.P. Morgan is not only the Fed. J I mean, J.P. Morgan's positions are the U.S. Treasury's positions. So, you know, what we're when you're when you're talking about the failure of J.P. Morgan, what we're really talking about here is the failure of the U.S. Uh, government. We're talking about a default from the U.S. Treasury. Uh, a default of J.P. Morgan is a de facto fault, a default of the U.S. Treasury because Morgan's, Morgan's outsized positions uh, are, are the Treasury's. Oh, oh uh, there's no question about that. They, Jamie Dimon and, and Morgan, they're going to take the dollar with them and with, and with them the U.S. economy, and that's their game plan. They, in other words, when Hank Paulson threatened to destroy America unless they gave him three-quarters of a trillion dollars, or every time they try to get some kind of law deregulated by threatening a financial catastrophe. Uh, Jamie Dimon has threatened dollar collapse. All right, Stacey Herbert, stay right there. We're coming back to you in the second half on this New Year's Day special. You know how sometimes you see a story and it seems so whole and complete, you think you understand it, and then you glimpse something else. You hear or see some other part of it and realize everything you thought you knew, you don't know. I'm Tom Hartman. Welcome to The Big Picture. Do we speak your language? Want news, programs, and documentaries in Spanish? What matters to you? Breaking news, alternative angles, hidden stories. Are you here? Then try RT Spanish. To find out more, visit actualidad.rt.com. Kaiser, welcome back to the Kaiser Report. You know, the biggest story the past five or six years has been J.P. Morgan's massive naked silver short position. I asked silver expert Ned Nather Leyland of Chiviat Asset Management whether or not this year could be the year that sees this manipulation scandal see some frickin' justice. Here we are, it's 2013. Time for your prediction. How will the LBMA silver market manipulation story pan out in 2013? Well, Max, I'll make a bold prediction, and contrary to all the evidence, I'm going to say that I think the story will break next year. I think we're going to get uh, the price will break free of its shackles due to the fact there's a, a serious lack of physical uh, within the bullion banking system, and I think we're all going to be very happy this time next year. All right, $500 silver, here we come. So, Max, even if Ned Naylor Leyland is correct and J.P. Morgan gets done pays a small fine for their silver price manipulation. They've already moved on 
to the next scam. And this is something that the Kaiser Report, you here on the Kaiser Report, have pointed out time and time again. They're always years ahead of the regulators because while they're being investigated, JP Morgan's being investigated for silver price manipulation and silver market manipulation, they've basically cornered the copper market. And you've asked Mitch Firestein of PonziPlanet.com about this ETF, this copper ETF, and here's uh, his response about that. I think that allowing them to have 27% control over the metal on the LME is a little bit um, much. I don't think that there's a need. I think ETFs are problematic, and I think in 2013 we'll see problems with a lot of the ETF products. Because if you read the prospectuses that are over 200 pages, you'll see that they don't have to directly correlate. I think it's another instrument that banks can use to take proprietary positions. So just another derivative waiting to blow up. It's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Well, you know, uh, last year we talked about the fact that J.P. Morgan was massively hoarding commodities around the world, including copper. And um, this is part of their game plan to try and financialize the entire global economy. And this goes through the office of Blythe Masters here in the U.K. Jamie Dimon is really the front man uh, for J.P. Morgan. But it's really Blythe Masters here in London who is really the brains behind J Jamie is just a cheap suit. You know, he's just a, a guy that likes to wear women's underwear. But Blythe Masters is actually the hardcore mastermind, hardcore terrorist in this equation. And she's been buying copper for a long time. Now they're going to introduce the ETF as a way to manipulate the price of copper. Well, it's not, just not all bad guys and outlaws, you know, in the commodities and precious metals market. There are some good guys. And I do want to say the man of the last year, 2012, and I think he's going to, 2013 is going to be the fruition of his work. That's Lars Schall. He's an independent journalist from Germany, and he has been relentless, dogged in pursuing the German Central Bank, the Bundesbank, and finding out where is the German gold. And this has set off a chain reaction of epic proportions that could see the collapse of this global fiat system because the post Bretton Woods, nobody, no nation has even bothered to audit their gold for the last 50, 60 years. And lo and behold, Germany is now ordered to audit their gold. Austria is asking about their gold. And the latest one, Max, are the Netherlands gold reserves real? MPs want answers. The Netherlands is said to have 612 tons of gold with a value of some 24 billion euros. Just 10% of it is held at the central bank headquarters in Amsterdam. The rest is in bank vaults in the U.S., Canada, and Britain. You know, it's a legacy of the gold standard, uh, but that, of course, ended in the 70s, any vestige of it. This is not actually a move toward a re-architecting of the gold standard. This is about panic amongst the central bankers who want the gold in-house as they prepare for the final fiat apocalypse. The paper money apocalypse is happening in 2013. Uh, those who want to become their own central banker, their own uh, you know, independent wealth managers need to do what the central banks are doing, buy gold and silver, uh, and to prepare for the paper apocalypse. Well, actually, I don't think it's the central banks that are leading this. I think the population, like Lars Schall, six years of sending email after email after email, and I'm CC'd on most of them. He sends them emails every single day for the last five years. It is the population demanding to know where their gold is. The population is the one that needs to have faith in their central banks, that need to have faith in their politicians to keep this whole thing running. And if, it, if they lose that faith, then you see the central bankers and some of the politicians who are answerable to the, the voting population, that they're the ones that are starting to be forced by the population. It shows you that the population, the people, ordinary people, can have some power. They can crash J.P. Morgan, buy silver. One ounce of silver bought by 100 million people around the world can crash J.P. Morgan. And as Rob Kirby then said, basically the whole U.S. fiat system. Yeah, sure, the central bankers are now being forced to account for their gold, but it doesn't mean they're going to share that gold once the paper apocalypse is upon us. Remember, central banks are owned by the same banks uh, as J.P. Morgan. The private banks own the central banks. The central banks are not there for the people. So the central banks want that gold because the people who run the, and own the central banks want the gold. If you think you're getting your gold from the central banks, you are freaking nuts. You need to get your own gold and silver. 
Well, the funniest question that these socialist and Christian Democrats ask in the Netherlands is whether or not the gold bars that London, Canada, and the U.S. are holding for them are actually real. They're actually asking if the gold bars are even real. Now look, they, they, they look what happened in the U.K. The British government <laughs> sent that old bag, Queen Elizabeth, into the vaults to say, Oh, your gold is safe here. Look, your gold is safe here. Don't worry about your gold. You know, that's a big propaganda nightmare. Your gold is not safe in Britain. Your gold is not safe anywhere unless it's in your personal vault. Well, that's a very important point you bring up, is that the Queen of England did visit the Bank of England gold vaults. And first of all, that's a classic con. You use a little old lady who all people always trust little old ladies. Right? She was stuffing <laughs> gold in her brazier. I saw it on off camera. And she was stealing the gold. You'd think she'd have enough, wouldn't you? No. And then the other thing is that the next day when she saw George Osborne, it was reported that she said, oh, I saw all the gold. Too bad it's other people's. It's not our gold. It's other nations like Austria and Netherlands. Don't worry. Little old lady, Queenie, I saw your gold. It's all there. It's fine. Well, this is the only use the monarchy has is to uh, fool people into thinking their gold is safe. You know, this is, if you go back in history, this monarchy, whether it's this freaking old bag or some other dude, they end up killing the commoners, don't they? They slaughter the commoners. If you're not a royalty, you're a commoner. The chance of you getting slaughtered? High. <laughs> well, so now part and parcel of this global financial system, which is ridden with fraud and outlaws like Jamie Dimon and Lloyd Blankfein, and we need to execute the banks like UBS, and even bigger than UBS is JP Morgan. Um, the rubble of my country sent me this link, and I think it's an important one to look at for 2013. Banking. Thousands of customers switch their account out of the big five. These are the big five British banks, many of them owned by the taxpayer. But apparently, actually, people are moving their accounts out of there out of anger about LIBOR manipulation, about the bailouts, about the corruption, about the drug running, about the money laundering, about the dealing with the enemy. And credit unions, small, usually locally based savings groups, have attracted almost 20,000 new accounts in the past six months. And building societies saw 78,000 new accounts. Uh, and a huge surge was following the LIBOR manipulation scandal. Well, it's great to see if people are angry enough to move their money. But when push comes to shove, the government and the big five banks will all be allowed to acquire these other institutions uh, as they need to acquire deposits to offset the fact that they have zero counterparties to make good on the obligations they made in various derivatives markets. So unless you, again, let me reemphasize this, unless you're holding, only keep money in paper that you're willing to lose. The only money in gold and silver that you have is the only money you will have. Every, all paper claims are going to be worthless in 2013. And now, speaking of this global insurrection against banker occupation, this is one thing you're starting to see with the populations around the world demanding to see at least an audit of their gold, uh, the nations, the sovereign gold supplies, or they're moving their money. This Move Your Money campaign has been huge across the world. Um, you did speak to one of the you know, chief activists around the world, and that is the Yes Men, Andy Bickelbaum. And you asked him for his prediction for 2013, and this is what he had to say. Well, I think last year uh, we saw the Arab Spring and the follow-up to that and the Occupy movement. I think this year is going to be the World Spring. And we're going to see the Occupy movement and all the other movements that have uh, blossomed throughout the world succeed. Well, yes, the global insurrection against banker occupation is alive and well. And uh, it's going to become huge as all of the springs, whether it's Arab Spring or the Greek Spring or the Kaiser Report Spring, spring together to the global spring. <laughs> well, you know, and, and if you're part of that, if you're hoping, you know, that all this LIBOR manipulation is going to help you buy more houses and buy more goods on your credit cards, because if they manipulate rates down, then it's going to be good for you. Well, not a single forecaster in Barron's has a negative forecast for the market 2013. 
Not a single forecaster, Max. Now, of course, why that is so is because they're counting on and they know there's going to be QE to infinity in the U.S. There's a new jump the shark situation in Japan. They're going into uber quantitative easing mode. Who knows? That's kamikaze quantitative easing. Quantitative kamikaze. Well, because Barron's is now owned by Rupert Murdoch, and Rupert Murdoch <laughs> is a propagandist super, supreme who didn't bring on the panel this year anybody who would say anything negative. I'm sure Jim Rogers was not on the panel, or Mark Faber, or anyone who's actually had a great track record in calling the twists and turns over the past decade. No, they got sympathizers, lackeys like Mario Gabelli. I'm sure he's back on there. This guy can't find an equity if it was tied to his underwear. <laughs> so. And then finally, I want to look at one other uh, area w which we have looked at over the past year. And we, we covered this notion of the debt jubilee, for example, that Occupy Wall Street has instituted. Morgan Stanley presents 17 big surprises that could rock markets in 2013. They see debt cancellation. The U.S., Japan, and U.K. announce that all debt resulting from their QE purchases is canceled, which would assuage the fears of rating agencies but anger bondholders. <laughs> Well, Morgan, in one of these banks is going to be taken out and shot, you know, like Lehman Brothers was executed. And the, probably Morgan Stanley will be the bank to get executed this year in 2013. They're obviously trying to make themselves relevant before they are asked to drink the cyanide and kill themselves. Yeah, but, I mean, here they're saying, um, and it's perhaps why every single forecaster interviewed by Barron's for their 2013 predictions is, is predicting a booming market. And that's because they're saying the debt cancellation isn't for you, the peasant. It's actually bad for you, the peasant, because they're monetizing the debt. What he's saying is that the U.S., Japan, and the U.K. are going to outright monetize their debt. They're going to cancel the debts they created out of thin air. And those predictions, those long-held predictions of hyperinflation may just finally come true in 2013. Well, they, the fact that they've taken a longer means that the collapse will be that much greater. So, um, again, everything is deflating against gold and silver. All right, Stacey Herbert, thanks so much for being on the special New Year's Day Kaiser Report. <laughs> Thank you, Max. That's it for this first episode of 2013. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can tweet us at Kaiser Report or on Facebook.com forward slash Kaiser Report. Until next time, Max Kaiser saying bye, y'all.